Hello booktube, my name is Laura and welcome to Book Bubbler. Today I wanted to do the leap year book tag. I am just sneaking in, um, since it's about 9.30 in the morning on leap day, um, which uh, reminds me I have to watch that 30 Rock episode about, was it leap year William? I have to watch that today too. Anyways, this tag was started by Melted Books and Amy Myers. I will link them of course below. So let's crack on so this isn't a thousand years long. Uh, number one, an extra day. What is one book that brought something a little extra? And for me, that is Radioactive by Lauren Redness. This is a graphic novel, um, which is very much her style. Let's see if there are some illustrations in here. She also uses maps and there's a big photograph. Oh, negative space. Anyways, um, yeah, this is about Marie Curie and the discovery of radium. And the extra thing is that this cover is glow in the dark. So this part here, this people, the background, the spine is radioactive, uh, radioactive, is glow in the dark. And I found that out because when I put it on my shelf, I went to bed that night and I was like, what is on my shelf that's glowing? It was dark in my room. I'm like, oh, it's the spine of the book. And then all these illustrations in the back are also glow in the dark. So this is really, really excellent. Um, can't say enough good things about it. And it made me a Lauren Redness fan for sure. You should pick that up. Number two, taking a big leap. What is one book that you are or were afraid to read? Um, there are a few... <sighs> Um, uh, Moby Dick is one by Herman Melville. Not that I am afraid of it so much. I am just reluctant to read it. In college, I had one professor, Dr. Stevens. I had him every semester for a class for three years. It was all different stuff, of course, um, but he was also my advisor. So in every single class, he would find some way to bring up Moby Dick and how it was the best book he'd ever read. And like our Shakespeare class, he'd relate a whole bunch of stuff to Moby Dick. And um, in the early 18th century class, it was Moby Dick again. And I mean, it sort of became a running joke between my friend Joy and I um, so much. So I think I've given her several copies of Moby Dick as gifts, like sort of gag gifts over the years. Um, so I don't know if I ever want to read that or not, but the one that I am afraid of that I had tried reading before was War and Peace. I have the PNV translation. Um, and I thought, oh, certainly this is supposed to be such a great translation. I can try it this way. And I got about 40 pages in and didn't know who was anybody. And I just thought, you know, not the time. I still have it somewhere. It's probably in my basement somewhere, but I am not in a rush to get back to trying to read War and Peace. Number three, every four years, what is the fourth book that you read this year? And that will be an ebook. It's The Chocolate War by Martin Walker. This is, uh, I think, the six and a half book. It's one of those in between the numbers books from, um, well, not it's a, a number book, but you know what I mean, in a series um, for the. Bruno Chief of Police series set in the Perigord region of France. So this was a cute little short story. Um, nothing fantastic. You wouldn't really get much out of it if you didn't know the character. So I wouldn't say, oh, start here. But you know, it was cute. Okay, number four, 366 days a year. Looking at your third shelf, what is the sixth book and the sixth book after that? So I, since my focus this year is reading books from my own shelves, I'm primarily focusing on the ones that are in my living room, which um, you guys haven't seen in a while. But I went to the third shelf down and the sixth book there is Between Earth and Sky by Karen Osborne. This is an epistolary novel set in the 1860s about a young lady, where is she going from? Um, Abigail, Abigail Conklin and her family have, last, have left post-Civil War South, uh, let's see, going from Virginia to New Mexico in a covered wagon. And it's about, let's see, from the 1860s to 1930s. So you follow Abigail and her sister um, writing back and forth to each other over the decades about her new life, what they've run into. I'm sure that they will be Indians and I'm sure there will be other stuff happening, um, but that's my first sixth book. And then next, I have owned this book since the publication of the paperback in 2006. 
it's a signed copy of Special Topics in Calamity Physics by Marisha Pessel. I don't know why exactly I bought it. I remember buying it, seeing it on the shelf in the bookstore. Um, Harry Schwartz, I miss you. Um, <laughs> but I, I don't know why I bought this exactly. If it was a hype machine that just sort of got me and it was autographed, so I thought, eh, what the hell, probably that's it because that's tends to be how I spend a lot of my discretionary money, which is not so discretionary. Um, but I, I don't know if I want to read this. And I, I have not read Night Film, her second book either. I mean, I'd like to try it at least. Maybe this should be one of my try chapter on hauls. I should do that for fiction, older fiction. Good idea. Okay, so that's the other sixth book. Um, by the way, if any of you have read any of these, please let me know too. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Okay, question number five, leaping ahead. Name four books that you want to read before the next leap year. So again, I just stood on my shelves, stood on my shelves, wow, that would be impressive. Stood in front of my shelves in the living room and just pulled four off that jumped out of it right away. So in no order, um, The Last Result by, Last Resort, excuse me, Why Can't I Talk by Carmen Posados. It's a mystery novel. This is One Square Inch of Silence by Richard Hempel, Gordon Hempton and John Grossman. And I would like to read this particularly, not just because I think it's interesting looking for natural silence in a very noisy world because humans destroy everything, but there is also like a soundscape and photos CD in the back that, and I like when stuff is extra and included. So I, yeah, looking forward to reading this one finally. Then there is Iceland by Betsy Tobin. This is set in Iceland in the year 1000. So this should be um, infused with the rich, rich history and mythology of Iceland. Uh, Betsy Tobin's sweeping novel is an epic adventure of forbidden love, lust, jealousy, faith, and magical wonder set under the shadow of a smoldering volcano. That sounds good. And one I am surprised I haven't read so far, as I think I own several of her books aside from this one, but that is The House at Riverton by Kate Orton. This is a first edition and she has several books out now, so I don't know why I'm waiting. So I'm going to try and read this one in the next four years. Should be doable. We'll see. Uh, question number six, Leapfrog. Name a book from your TBR that has green in it. Now there are several. Green is my favorite color, so I tend to be drawn to green covers, which there aren't a ton, but this is the greenest thing I could find. And that is Native Speaker by Zhang Li. And the edges are green. Every single part of this book is green. So if this doesn't qualify, nothing will because, I mean, look which undertones on 30 rock anyways um number seven bad luck what books what bookish things do you steer clear from um there are a few and i wish i would have i don't think i have any actually um okay one is those tends to be soft paperback soft covers that are kind of tacky and they show any kind of fingerprint, anything you time you touch it or like look at it, it gets a little weird mark in it. And as it ages, which does not take very long to happen, like less than a year, the like outside edge here starts to curl up and fold back. I hate those books. I will not buy them. Um, another bookish thing I don't like is, and this may seem really obvious, but obvious stains and damage that are not clearly just water. Like if you find a mass market somewhere that is got water damage, you assume someone dropped it in the bath, which not that that's great either, but like, you know what it is. I'm talking about like mysterious brown smudges in library books. Um, yeah, it was when I worked at the library, we got a lot of gross stuff back and library books are virtually never cleaned unless they were so filthy with an obvious stain like chocolate or something to begin with. Um, so that's a heads up for you. I wipe down almost every library book I get. I know they don't really hold germs, but because I see how icky stuff is that comes back, I get real nervous and I don't like it. So I just clean stuff. So anyways, so that's two. Number three, this might be controversial. I don't like duckle edges. I like to flip through the book, like when I'm holding a hardcover and like flip the other pages. And because it's chunky, I don't like getting like three or four chunks of a flip. Um, so, I mean, I have them and I, I read them, I own some, but if there's any kind of option, or even if I wait till the paperback or mass market, I don't care. I will do it if I can, because I just am not a fan of deco ledges. And the fourth thing that I steer clear from, 
un or, well, intentionally picking up books as part of a series um, without having, without knowing that they are part of a series, without having the first one or two or three already on my shelves or something. Um, I really hate when I find an interesting sounding book at like a library sale or at half price or little free library, wherever, and I pick it up and I think this is going to be so good. And I get home and I go to enter it into my library and library thing. And I, it's like the seventh book in a series. I mean, come on. So those are four things I don't like. And then you're supposed to tag four friends, but it is leap day and several of my friends have already done this. So if you are watching this and you want to do this, please consider yourself tagged. Um, I hope you are enjoying this extra bonus day. I am going to head to the library and pick up some holds, probably pick up lunch somewhere because why not? I'm already out. And um, today is a litzy party of one. These are little introvert parties that are hosted by two or three people on Litzy, a mom, a mom and daughter, um, a few times a year. And it's just, you talk about books, you post about them when you're reading them know your snacks and stuff, usual stuff. It's like a little read-a-thon, but there's no pressure or anything. You just join in when you can. So I'll probably be reading a lot of the afternoon, which is good because I have to get caught up on booktube prize stuff. Anyways, gonna stop rambling. Hope you're having a good day and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.